For more than two decades, a growing number of architects and urban planners, disturbed by the increasing congestion and chaos of the modern city, had been arguing that the old urban order of narrow streets and blocks be left behind and replaced with an entirely new one. Consecrated to the car and the highway and the dream of infinite mobility, this vision of a radiant new city of tomorrow had found its purest expression before the war in the awesome public works of Robert Moses, in the ravishing exhibits of the World's Fair, and in the writings of a visionary Swiss architect and urban theorist named Le Corbusier, who had been amongst the first to sense that cities themselves had been rendered completely obsolete by the advent of the automobile. It is a wonderful passage from Le Corbusier. He walks out in the streets of Paris um, near the university and he feels very nostalgic. Um, and he says, in the good old days, when I was a student, we used to walk these streets and we would stand in the middle of the street and argue. We could have races with each other and we could play games, but now we're swept away by the cars. And he's very bitter about that. And then he says, what can we do? And then there's like a kind of cognitive leap, which is we have to somehow merge with the cars. We have to, if we can completely identify with them and forget this paradise lost from our youth, when the streets belong to us, that because that's the refrain, the streets belong to us then. But if you can forget that and repress the part of you that loved the streets and felt at home in them, and that feels very angry that you can't, you know, that there's too much traffic for you now, that you don't fit in, that like history has surpassed you, you can make a leap and surpass it. And the way that he did was through this concept of the highway system and the flow that would never end and the traffic that would always be moving. And what he wanted to do in Paris and New York was to basically kill the street, tear it all down, and put up giant slabs connected by highways. I think he's probably the greatest metaphysician of the highway system anywhere. And Moses was certainly his greatest disciple.